because I know you all read the voice front to back and upside down and inside out too. But the Animal Welfare League just got a $25,000. goes a long way for our little fur babies. Yeah. And then, you know, if you, if you want to get, if you're going to be a fur animal and you're going to get dumped, you better get dumped in the village. Because <laughs> life will be good. Don't you think you should mention Petco? Well, Petco was the one that gave the $25,000. Oh, okay. right. yeah. 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 So, that's it. so well, you can support great. Petco in any way for your little evening snacks or anything. So, anyway, we are going to be dogs, you know. <laughs> 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 Okay, the, the routine here, the way we've been doing this, is anybody that actually put a topic down, we'll start with them, and um, and you can ask it, and we'll we'll try to answer it as best we can. Um, and most of you were real good about putting a topic down, which is is great. Um, some of you said, I always I'll think of something, and that's that's <laughs> great too. There's not so many of you here that we won't have time. That. Yeah, that, yes, Jerry. <laughs> we got two hours to think of something. Um, now I have three. We have heard it for oh. uh, the, the first uh, person who had a question and signed up was Monica. Impazella? Is there? Oh, my God, thank you. You got me. I'm changing my subject. It's Impazeri. Thank you. Thank just you. like it's, don't let the letters scare you. Just, just like it actually just, says yeah, here, right? Yeah, okay. just spit it out that way. Did you marry that name? I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My previous name only had six letters. This has 26. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's lucky you're smart. It's a pretty name. Um, is, is your question the same? No. Instead of on the CMP, because I didn't get to really ask. Answer have, what the question was. What did I have done? You've got what, where, and when will the pocket neighborhoods be started? That was from last time. Good, because that's what I'll stick with. <laughs> that's fine. Um, so basically, I know I asked last time if they were changing the lot size and were they going to make them smaller lots, and evidently not. So what exactly are they going to look like? Are you going to have, you know, small houses on the same size lot? Are you going to have uh, houses to duplexes? What are you doing? Well, personally, from what little we know at this point. The lots were just like a regular subdivision lot. There's no change in that. We are looking at, or they're looking at, a contractor that will take and buy, say, 15, 18, 20 lots, and then he will sit, submit four or five different house layouts. Or, you know, so they all are not the same. But they'll be regular houses anywhere from, I'm guessing, 1,700 to 2,300 square feet. Those will be submitted to ACC for approval. He will build a model home, will be one of those homes, and it'll be furnished for people to walk in and look at and then they can, if they want him to build them a house, he'll sell them a lot and build them a house. It'll so, be just like any other subdivision. So why is it called a pocket neighborhood? Well, that That's made me a missed information on the, on the way that the name came out because it, it will still in a sense be a little subdivision but it'll all be just so lots will be you've got all, all like 15 together. lots in one area yeah. but it may be more more like a um, a, neighborhood. A, a, neighborhood. a neighborhood like a like a large cul-de-sac so that it really will be a pocket neighborhood you can't help but know the people around you and Probably and if you don't like those people, people, you might be. Yes, yeah, so and then you buy something in another room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, right. but the lots aren't closer. You just no. <coughs> and you have parking. Right. Off street. Right. Off street. Off street. Garage. Off street. Garages. Yeah. It's not necessarily behind the house. Right. They don't. I mean, I'm picturing the place over there in Bryant. No. 
and yeah, they have no parking on the street, but they also have no garages showing. Right. These are normal and houses. Small. Normal houses and normal lots. I think the question came up originally because of the, the easement aspect, and, right? Yeah. And, and possible conflicts with Have them. you been out to yeah. Madeira's garden? Yes, I have. Okay, just take that and, and knock it down to 17, 20 lots instead of 47. Now, are these, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. It's too late at night. Um, so are you taking bids on different contractors that already built here, or is it a one contractor I'm, from the guild? You don't know. I don't know. We don't know. Do you know, know the area? Know we don't know the area because see if we knew the area then maybe too many people would know the area because we may not have acquired all the lots you know the area gets we have renee hagan who works in our land acquisition and we have the 3511 yeah. now 3744 but well, who's counting? 3,474. We went above that. We're over 3,500 now. But anyway, but anyway, so within an area, I'll, take, I'll give you an instance, and I don't even know if this is even, even anywhere close to it. But I used to live off of Coronado Drive, where you come in, and and where if you were coming down, going out the Larry here today, you could turn left and go down um, Coronado Lane. You can turn right and go down Coronado Lane, Coronado Drive. It's Coronado left Drive. Left the And left, no, no. left on, on Valeric. That's the, you turn left onto Coronado, on Coronado Road. Road. That you lived on Coronado Road. I lived on Coronado Drive. Was that, is that Drive? Yeah, it was that Road. was Drive. Right. She was a neighbor. And I could <laughs> turn, I could turn left and go down Altrusa or whatever. Okay, you're going Altrusa. the other way. Altrusa. Yeah, to Mayo. <laughs> And then I could take the first road to the left, and there's never been developed back. No, there. it's where I walk. Never, ever, ever, ever. Okay, oh, so I used to, I used to walk around in there all the time, and I would think, wow, you know, this would be a great place. Well, you know, why I say I don't think that that's it because we don't have electrical back there and, and some other things, but. Um, if you could acquire all those lots, and I remember when NPRI came in and put their stakes up mm. all in there, so some of those they may have sold to somebody, some of them we may own, I don't know. But anyway, what we're trying to do is develop some of those areas into new subdivisions. Okay. So we really have a misnomer. Right. And Probably a, should be called a pocket neighborhood, neighborhood, in my opinion. Well, that that came out because this is part of the CMP, so that was the term used by those consultants. Right. And frankly speaking, if I'm going to be honest about it, I would have tried to say, you know, hey, let's maybe we need to be careful with with the language that we do use, and that may be something that we can fix going forward. I don't know, yeah. but that's what we're looking at okay. for 2020. Okay. Right now. So is that dinky little houses? Not little dinky little, little, little houses with on-street parking and that kind of thing. These have garages. I asked that question. I'm and I sure. hope you like your neighbors. <laughs> I like the neighbors where I am, and I'm fine. So. Okay, great, great. So that takes care of your question, Mom? Yes, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Um, Susan? Hossier? She's not here. She's not she here. Didn't come. Okay. <laughs> She had an interesting question. I, I looked at that. Cheryl's here. Well, do we want to answer her question? Is it that yeah. interesting? Yeah, what's the question? Well, it, it's not a complete question. It's It just says rental landlords and reserves. Um, part of me might think that it has something to do with compliance, but I can't no. even second guess what she wants to ask there. No. no. Okay. no. So, no. so no, I don't want to answer it. <laughs> this is not a question. It's yeah, not a right? question. Sure. I think I know what Susan, um, she expressed a concern to me about um, people buying up homes on the west side and turning them into rentals. She seems to think, or at least that's what I understood. We have no control do we, over that. Do we, do we have, have control okay. Um, I know in some associations, I don't know about this one, but in some associations, they limit the number of homes that can that's not here. No, that would be we have to, they, they have to follow the rules and regulations, which I am. We don't have general rules and regulations, which is online under the governing documents. Um, so obviously, if they get in disrepair, then compliance would be uh -huh. after them. Yeah. But, and there's no restrictions. We can't charge them more. We can't. Uh, 
we, we can't do anything just because they yeah. have property. And it's that's just like you and me. Mm -hmm. That may not have been what she wanted to say, but she did express that concern to me, so that's what I thought maybe it was. Um, I would like to say I am very pleased that these are not pocket homes, that they're regular homes, and they sound like sounds like it's going to be a nice development, and that's really good to hear. Um, has there been any kind of an update on the hotel? Are, are we any further into that? <laughs> we or the wish, lodge? The we lodge. Wish. We wish we no. no. Okay. I just wondered. No, we don't know where it's going to be yet. Or we don't we're not even, it's not even I being mean, pursued at all. Oh. Uh, uh, Leslie was contracted to, uh, asked to come August up with something meeting. by August. Right. So right. it's being pursued by Leslie and gathering information it's, to it's present a, to it's the board. A, it's a goal, but it's it's one of those where you you try to find a developer that wants to come in here and run it, pay for it, everything else. It's it's yes, yeah. but it's not it's not a dead in the water. No, it's not. Oh, no, it's, no. it's something she's supposed to present. But you know, but nothing, we, don't have, we don't have not. anybody out there with the the knocking on the door, telling us they got the money to build it and run it. And that's what we'd be looking for. Right. Can I say one more thing? Um, I'm really pleased, Nancy, that you said that if someone didn't have, you know, sometimes we sign up for these a month ahead or even more. You can. You can sign up for them way ahead. And we may not really know what we're going to ask. But I understand why if, if we can give you something that does give, you know, you can look up information because... I mean, you guys are smart, but you can't know everything. This is a big association. Well, like, like Sam asked <laughs> when we walked in the door, and he said, what in the world are you doing with all that stuff? Yeah, and then, right. And then he said, do you know what the questions are? And I, I, I mean, we have right. an idea, but we don't know. Yeah. Well, I'm taking the stance if I don't know what I can get back to. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate that. Well, thank you. Okay. And we will get to everybody tonight. I mean, it's, there's not that many people here. Uh, Joe's not here, is he? No, he had to stay home. Okay. Um, and his his, his uh, topic, and it's not really a question, folks. It's a topic, and so we we just can have an idea of maybe what's currently going around. His uh, question topic was HSVPOA. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> so it is what it is. Um, yeah. He didn't express that to me. I'm sorry. Right. Okay. okay. Is Mary here? And I can't even begin to pronounce you your can't? last name. You can't? Mary, would you pronounce your last name? Chiponyak. Thank you. And she's a TBD. Right. To be determined. <laughs> right. Okay. Well. Okay. We're prepared for you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get back to you. <laughs> neighborhood, this pocket neighborhood, and why are we seeking out a different developer? And in the beginning of, of the village, did John Cooper, because there's pocket neighborhoods all over this community, um, mm -hmm. where, you know, just small clusters of, of houses in a given, given area, they're everywhere, particularly on the west side. And uh, so, so my question is, why are we, as a homeowners association, a property owners association, going out and seeking out other developers to come up with a plan that we are implementing? Can I take? Sure. <laughs> okay. John Cooper, Cooper Communities is our developer. Right. Has always been our developer. Right. But Cooper Community Homes no longer has a presence here, a large presence here. They don't have a team to be building large groups of homes here. If they wanted to, mm -hmm. to do what we're attempting to do with another or other builders, mm -hmm. they would be more than welcome to be part of, the, to be part of it. 
Why don't we talk to them? We yeah, have. We yeah, are yeah. talking. Okay. We actually talked with John and Joey this morning. We okay. we have reestablished relationships there. We have a good yeah. record. Yeah. Yeah. Let me yeah. let me yeah. let, well, let me finish answering your uh -huh. question, and then we can discuss that a little bit. Y'all would like to, for us to discuss that. But so so any any anybody that's in the building business is welcome to come here and say, hey, you know, I've got a group of house plans here. Because usually what builders do, and I, this is just what I've educated myself since getting on the board, is they'll have, you can, I can go around on the golf courses and see homes that were built by the builder that built my first home that I lived in in the village. Mm -hmm. um, it was a Jimmy Bates home and they're all over the village in various mm -hmm. places. So what they usually do is they have three, four, five, different house plans, right. that's what they do. Right. Because they have their economy of scale and that's mm -hmm. how then they can make their money because they know, you know, pricing wise and everything, mm -hmm. how they do that, they get the drawings right. for them and that's all they do. So <clears throat> anybody that's in the building business, you can pick out the, ca uh, the um, um, carriage homes, same way, mm -hmm. same type of thing. You can see the roof lines and you mm -hmm. can figure that they were carriage homes. So anybody is welcome to get into this. This mm -hmm. is not an exclusive club or anything. Well, I think it's really interesting because because there's a house down the street from me that I perceive to be very similar to my house. Mm -hmm. But it's like one on the this whole big area, mm -hmm. you know, and all these other houses are all very different mm -hmm. and and if you put like a cluster of houses, <laughs> as you see in the townhouse communities, you've got a cluster of houses that are all similar mm -hmm. and look the same. And is that what we really want as opposed to... These nests won't really necessarily be all the These same. They can be things. customized. I know when yeah. I go drive through Madeiras, they all look the same. Yeah. Well, but that's a, that is, you know, we use the word townhouse here because we've been using that since all Those are townhouses. No, no, no. Small no, no, no. houses. Like no, I understand that. But, but that concept, the, the townhouse type concept in that... That's what that has trickled into out of Madeira's Gardens. It's mm -hmm. like that because their association fee, they pay it into an organization called the Villas, to you know, because they don't have any maintenance there. That's all through Cooper. That's all through CCI. Okay. Because they're not part of the Townhouse Association, right. so even though they operate under kind of the Townhouse concept. Okay, gotcha. So that's why they're built that way. You can, Just like Davino Courts, they're not part of the Townhouse Association. Uh -huh. No, they're Cooper. They're Coopers. They're Coopers. Uh -huh. uh, and, and you can go through the village and see Cooper houses every day. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, right. you can recognize a Cooper house. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. uh, and we've had many other developers in the in the village for uh, years. One one uh, thing too builders. is there, we have a, a builder, house builder, contractor named Jay Allen. Jay Allen goes into the POA and negotiates prices on, what, 12, 15 lots at a time? Usually at a time, yeah. And then, but they're not all next door to each other. Mm -hmm. But he has like six or seven plans of a house that he submitted to the ACC. And see, that would be logical to me. Hold on. Oh, okay. But <laughs> this is going to be the same thing because what they're doing, they are buying lots that the DOA needs to sell. So you're not, but I understood you to say that they were lots all in a gang. They, they are. Group. But, but, but you know, they are. These are. These are. are, these, these, are these, these, these are, but this, this, the different contractors, like Mr. Cooper, they have their own plumbers, their own electricians, mm -hmm. and all right. things like that. And that, I don't call him a developer. I mean, he is a contractor, a house builder. Carriage Homes is not a developer, and they're the ones that have built like 10 or 11. He's 11. saying he doesn't call Jay Allen a developer. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah. He's a builder. He's yeah. a builder. So the bottom line for Pocket Neighborhood is to sell POA lots. Right, POA owned lots. Well, if we have a group of lots in an area, and maybe maybe there's a few lots within that area that aren't ours, then we're going to, today, Hagen would, you know, try to trade for those or whatever so that we can have a cohesive area to sell to I a think builder. To, to answer your question, though, but we wouldn't, I don't believe anybody would turn down 
another another no, builder no. they wanted to build to do the same a pocket thing. neighborhood or a subdivision if they wanted to buy all of the lots that they could in an area. It doesn't have to be our lots because the main point of all of this is adding some more people that pay assessments right. Right. and yeah. use the amenities and right. pay the amenity fees. And mm -hmm. So oh, Nancy, right. does the uh, POA make a contract with those in the guild? And is that a Sorry. certain percentage that goes to the POA for them to work with them? The, there are special deals now as far as a contract and a percentage that we get. Mm -hmm. We're looking to get rooftops and mm -hmm. revenue from assessments and amenity fees over a we're, long period of time. Just It's not like we're going to build a pocket neighborhood and realize millions of dollars. It, we're it's just, over a period of with time. With this subdivision that we're going into, from everything that we've seen is that somebody's going to come in here, buy the lots from us, so we get the revenue from the lot sale. And then they build the houses as they see fit, and they sell them to whomever they want to sell them to. Well, the, uh, the next question would be, uh, I've never seen the POA advertise lots for sale, per se, if they you could put it up on the website and say, here's what we have, or... They're in the MLS. They're right. in the multiple, multiple listing. They're in the MLS. Mm -hmm. Well, they do come up on Zillow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They'll come up on Zillow. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'd say that probably we're using more digital advertising than we are print advertising because it's more cost effective mm -hmm. but they're out there oh i know they're out there but i can never understand who owns them sometimes you go through well sometimes we don't know who owns them either that's why renee has a job <laughs> sometimes they're sold they're so they've, uh, they've defaulted on taxes and the arkansas state commissioner of lands sells them and we have no clue they until they say hey i bought a house what is this letter you want what <laughs> you know, yeah, we had a we had a gal we had a gal recently contact us because she had bought a lot through the Arkansas Land Commission, and when that transaction takes place, the Arkansas Land Commission notifies us that Betty Sue bought a lot from us, and then we send out some paperwork and we send it to the to the address that, of record from the Arkansas. Mm -hmm. uh, commission on Lands. To the address of the lot she bought. Right. Well, no, no, we send no, it to the address. There's that lot there. there. The mailbox. Right. There wouldn't be anybody there. So we send it certified she, mail she, to she, that she, to their address of record that they give was. when they make the purchase, when they do the purchasing agreement with mm -hmm. them. And and she called and said, I can't get my, uh, she emailed and I, she couldn't get her certified letter because she worked and da 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 and could they give her this stuff electronically and you know, she contacted every board member about it, and um, you know, so these are going on, going on all the time. But let me share with you, uh, maybe, maybe I can clear up this lot situation or not clear it up, but explain a little piece of this what we're facing with this lot situation based upon something that Liz, our chief financial officer, was sharing with me. We will have these lots that are in default; they haven't paid their assessments. And all of a sudden, a check will come in, and it'll be for lot box addition number da 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 da, and it'll clear that all up, and that lot will then be free and clear. Then, shortly thereafter, paperwork will come through that that lot now the deed is to be given to Bobby and Annie over here. Well, Bobby and Annie have probably been paying somebody vis-a-vis through NRPI all these years, okay? But NRPI, what they've done is they've like, okay, they'll send a notice out to, to Bobby and Annie and say, quit sending your check to this address and this name and now make your check payable to this. So we have all these shell companies that they've been, one will go bankrupt and go out of business and another one comes in. So tracking some of the deeds on these lots and then we the other situation we have is this example mom and dad come down here in 1972 and buy a lot they've been paying on it no problem they don't want it anymore so they give it to my brother yeah he's using he he, he, he thinks he'd like to come here someday so he keeps paying on it and he's been paying on it well 
then he dies and his kids get it. Well, no one has ever changed the name on the deed on this lot. <laughs> and now they want to sell it. So we have to, that, that lot needs to go some to that. Lots of digging and things when it comes to title work. And you ask why? We need the rooftops because we need the rooftops. Yeah, that I, I get. Oh, yeah, totally get that. All right. Um, Vicki? Yes. Vicki? Hi, Vicki. There's Vicki. Vicki uh, Vicky wanted just a couple of comments and one point of clarification about <laughs> topics discussed right. at the 626 Let's Talk. Well, my first comment would be, or question, I guess, would be, why has that never been posted? The video of that Let's Talk has never been posted. I don't know. I asked Larry. Larry has turned it over to our IT department. I I never looked at it again, but I will find out about I that. I've got enough to, find, got out enough to find out about it. Okay. I have no idea why it hasn't been posted. It was the lively. It was. <laughs> and my original question was going to be based on watching that again because I wanted to ask something at the time that someone had commented about that I thought was incorrect. Do, so, you, do you know what you can you can give up? Uh, no, I can't because I don't know who the person was, oh, and I'm okay. certainly not going to say this person said something that was wrong. Well, I'm you can say sure what was said. We don't have to make sure people. What well, do you need clarification on a point that was made to see if we can yeah. correct something? So was there a topic that we need to clarify for you? Uh, yes, as soon as I watch the video. Okay. Do <laughs> so you have another question? <laughs> uh, no, that was my only real question. Okay. Okay. What day? <coughs> Pardon? What day? Which it was June the 26th. Oh, okay. that one. That one. Yeah, it was the previous one. Last one's last one. Well, that's Tor Tor yeah, I they to didn't want to post it because Torment was in it. We took how many years that, Diana? Well, I didn't finish my question. Oh! My other question was, Tony was supposed to be here tonight. Where is he? No, he wasn't. Three of us. Tony will be at the next one. Nine o'clock DeSoto on August the twenty fourth, I believe. Tormy will be at that one, and so will Dick, and so will I. <laughs> <laughs> She's scheduled. Who is the other person? Oh, Dick. Well, Dick Harrison. Yeah. See, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I was supposed to be here tonight, if it was supposed to be Mike. But Mike was going to be. He didn't know when he was leaving this week on a trip, and I don't. I don't know if I'm I think the original. I'm Mike. You're I think, Mike. I think, I I think you're Mike. <laughs> you may be. I, I, don't, I don't know. know. But see, so we I trade around. I could have sworn that it said Tormy was going to. No. Well, no. It, it might have. It might have, it but might. we never intended for it to. But when somebody, one of the directors can't make it, then they just ask somebody else or somebody or else. Or would you that. please, you know, whatever. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm sorry if you didn't want to see us. <laughs> <laughs> she wanted Tormy. She wanted Tormy. Yeah, that's how I got I guess instead of Diana, I don't know. <laughs> oh, Diana, no, 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 no. All right. So is that your last question? Yes. Yeah. Oh, for now. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. the TBD remains. Okay. Is Sherry Nelson here tonight? No, she's she's no, she elsewhere. Um, her topic was work sessions, and I can make a quick comment on work sessions. Uh, Dick Garrison and Mike Medica were going to get together and uh, and come up with something on that to present to the board for for uh, discussion. Um, Dick has been kind of ill off and on, and his daughter and he's doing fine now. Yeah, and so. His That's daughter had have a, a heart surgery that they weren't expecting, so he mm -hmm. went for that. And then uh, Mike had to be gone, and you know, it's getting the schedules. But I do know that they have spoken. Um, I do know that that they're putting th that they're putting together a plan to present to the board, and um, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we, we we're hopeful that it'll happen. Yeah. We're working. We just don't work as fast. As you know. <laughs> we're a little slower. Monica, now I see the CMP. Yeah, I, I, you don't care now? 
Well, it's not that I don't care. I just don't get my train of thought together. Okay. Well, I was at a meeting yesterday for the Cornell Fitness Center, so I was okay. preoccupied with those questions. Okay. <coughs> work on your thoughts, and we'll I'll work. We'll out. come back to it. Or and someone else brings it up. That I don't. Didn't something. see Judy. Is Judy Glaves here? I didn't see her. Um, is he, here? Uh, he is, but he he already told me he'd like to not talk or ask those okay. questions. Okay. okay. Um, uh, Judy Claves, I don't see her. Her topic was budget, and that's pretty open ended, too. I have no idea what the question might be. But Jerry, we're working on it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on it. It's underway. Uh, Jerry is here, and she said, Undecided this time, but I always have questions from attending the board meeting, which will be the week before. Right. And do you? I have a question, but also um, my friend Kay and Jane, you Sorry. forgot her name. She's Jane, they both have questions too. So um, their questions might be my, more important than mine. I, I could give my time to them, you and then you can to. circle back to me when we're done if you want. Uh, okay, we'll we'll uh, we'll circle back. Uh, actually, uh, we only have a now to, to be determined. That's a duplicate again, and we have Terry. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to ask your question first, then you guys, all three of you, can have your questions, and then we'll just open it up. Oh, okay. Oh, that that would be yeah, fine. That's, yeah, that's I just want to make sure they. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to give them. Terry's right there. My time. Yeah. You bet. Terry, I want to pronounce your last name. Under my uh, uh, town hall res uh, registration, I put chief member, experience officer, major job responsibility, and road and bike survey of April 2019. Uh -huh. um, you probably think, well, responsibilities of the new person, how, how come you don't know that? It's been printed in the paper and this and that, but I think as I lead into this, you'll see why I'm asking the question, and maybe there's an easy answer. First, could, I, could I first tell you that the chief member experience officer is in charge of food and beverage, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. recreation, mm -hmm. lakes, mm -hmm. golf, mm -hmm. golf maintenance, mm -hmm. and marketing. Okay. And the, the, the lead thing in under the, the voice article on April the 9th stated the first major thing is marketing. That was going to be a major focal point for her. On another release, not in the paper, on uh, April 10th, I pulled up on the computer and it says the position of the community engagement officer was what the title was going to be and it further stated that Jamie would oversee nine golf courses and 200 clubs. Really? That surprised me when I saw that. Well, 200 clubs. Uh, my question is, of all of these things that she say, who's been doing it in the past? Um, the, uh, the clubs, I'm not real clear on that. I didn't, didn't read that unless, unless she's going to be like a liaison to all of our wonderful clubs that we have in the village. And if that's the case, I know that she's already shown up at the uh, the coffee, mm -hmm. uh, the new member coffee, and uh, <coughs> I think she's already joined maybe the friends of the friends of the trails, and, um, you know, or her husband has. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know, I don't really know about the two hundred clubs. Mm -hmm. um, that was in the paper. I read that in the paper myself, and that was a quote from her of what she thought she was going to be doing when she got here. And I'm not so sure that I, that maybe she didn't misspeak, perhaps, because our clubs have always, the, the POA has nothing to do with the clubs. We just don't, we have no authority over the clubs. And you are correct. It, it was something she misunderstood that was clarified down the road since then. Because right. when it came out, it was like, what did they, what did right, they right. So that. So that and is just then, then I would mistake. like to say to this that from the board perspective, we have no authority and no say over operations other than the top level oversight and planning ideas that we've put together for our CEO. And that person then has the responsibility for operations, hiring and firing, et cetera, and et cetera. So that is not in our ballpark. It doesn't get to be on our playing field. So 
Is there more to your question on that part of it? Um, part of that release too, which I felt, felt or I found to be interesting enough to bring up this topic because I know how job descriptions and everything go this way. But it says, and I said, uh, the same April release indicated that the Capertoons who initiated a festival in August plan to return to head up the event while bringing some of the village staff as volunteers. This was decided before she was on the payroll. My question is, will the POA be covering expenses such as lodging, food, and travel? And will there be any expense at all from this operation? They have some very dear friends here. Yeah. In fact, that's how they found the village. Right. Um, and and he's, they said, gee, we'd love to move to the village, but I gotta get a job. And so there was a job and she, she interviewed for it. She came back a couple of times um, before she got the job and she was one of several that were interviewing for that job. And so she and her husband who uh, as a uh, retired police officer, mobile, motorcycle supervisor unit kind of thing. I I can't let don't you know don't go to him and say that that's what he does. But and they have a son who's uh, who's disabled. That's that's with them also. Um, that was her very first ever report, and she'd been here what three weeks at that point, something like that actually on the job three weeks. So she barely probably had met everyone that was her direct charge. The board has not received any travel requests okay. or anything along that nature. So if we people, wouldn't. We, we and we not. wouldn't because that's part of operations, but we have not seen anything on the calendar about anybody gonna be gone okay. to go to this festival. But I had the same concern that you did. But um, you probably pulled it up the same place I did on their website out in Colorado. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. That's yeah. Right. It's all the same thing. But I mean, if somebody wants to take vacation time and oh, go out to do that, they're they're more than welcome right. to it. But I certainly would. I I I mean, I I hear your pain. Okay. So that well, I'm going to ask the like question to the right person. Out. That's. I will go to uh, Leslie or certainly. someone and ask them. Yes. That's where you need to go to so operations and ask the question. You know, th there is budgeted dollars though for, I'm going to call it uh, <coughs> promotion, continuing education, whatever you want to call it. But marketing. But there's there's budgeted dollars for right. that type of travel. I so I mean, you know, you, you can't get real upset because it is something that uh, that we've approved as a board already. I hate to think we're going to Colorado and spending money when we go down yeah. to Texas and bring, bring oh. up a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of people from Colorado here, too. Well, they yeah. have a lot of shopping. Yeah. Colorado. Colorado. But that isn't a heavy market. Mm -hmm. it is. Just one second. Was the second part of your question about the bike? And yeah, well, it was. I just here it was, is. I think what we <laughs> had on this uh, uh, this position, I was wanting to know this, uh, this uh, CMEO position that she is filling, that was part of the CMP probably too, where they're saying we need that kind of a position in the village, right? Mm -hmm. So this yes. building, village has been building on the CMP, I would say quite frankly, from Waypoint to Grove Park, all that concept, even though it wasn't maybe in writing yet, that's all part of this whole program. Fair enough? Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the bike and golf uh, cart uh, survey, I answered that when I got done, I didn't mean to send it. Oh, I thought it was one of the worst surveys I've ever seen put out. If you look at that and, and, and take it for what they're asking, do you want wider, wider shoulders for your golf cart on the roads? Do you want cart paths for golf carts? Do you want wider shoulders for a bike? We can't even do anything at the Balboa Golf Course and we have a committee putting out something like that. You know, it doesn't make sense to me. I know, I know that 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 doesn't. But you gotta start somewhere, right? Uh, it's, Not the only it's, one. It's called yeah, but it's, it's community engagement. Okay, that's what it is. Is that how do we know until it's too late what you folks want if they don't do stuff like this? Okay, we're not gonna run right out and put a third lane on Desoto, maybe yeah. because we can't afford it. We the property on and on and on. So just because a survey went out doesn't mean that we're really spending any money on it. 
but we got to start somewhere, right? We, we got to get the information from what the residents want. Um, this was kind of kind of disappointing, and the, the, the very first question was like 147 responded. You're right. I mean, obviously road biking is more more uh, important than mountain biking. That was kind of the outcome. People would love to be able to drive their golf carts around, but they probably are going to get killed. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Um, <laughs> there's one question that actually says that you feel feel safe. safe. The bikers seem to feel safer than the golf cart people do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it says, as a cyclist, as a cyclist, I feel safe riding my bike on Hot Springs Village trails. Okay? 73.27% said yes. And 26.73% and, uh, said no. <coughs> now, what, there's one here for be safe on our What this come out of the Recreation Committee? Or came this? out of the Recreation Committee. Mm -hmm. um, they had had, um, you know, maybe not everyone did receive this, but everyone that was interested in <coughs> biking. And this has been almost a year ago that it, that April. it started. April. Okay. April. Yeah. Well, no, but the first meeting of all the bikers. Oh, I see. Yeah. How many total respondents were there? Well, there it, each question was different because people skipped they did. What's they the max? Down? Like, I feel safe driving my car. The maximum husband. number of people that responded? Well, it's, it's different. 14,000 residents. Right. Yeah. So, they you know, say 73% thought something is out a pretty of small percentage of 14,000. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But unfortunately, that's what a lot of the surveys get. They get that kind of attention. You know, that's one of the things that we face, uh, one of the challenges we face is that, believe it or not, we don't get a lot of feedback from the property owners as to specifics on what they want. We get a lot of complaining of what they don't want, but we don't get a lot of, I mean, I don't ever get emails giving me a solution for something. Or, boy, it'd really be nice if we had something like this. And back in the day, that's kind of how this village was built. And maybe that's a societal shift and we just don't have that anymore. But people kind of would get together and say, man, it'd be nice if we had da 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 Woodlands is a prime example of that, a performing arts place. Look what that has done for our village. Could you imagine having the village without the Woodlands? No, I mean, no. I couldn't. No. But <laughs> there was a lot of argument. But there was a lot, lot a lot, a lot of people. And now, I don't know how many of you play cards, but the Village Card Club is not just about bridge anymore. There's a lot of card games in there. There's Minoco and Euchre and Cribbage and I don't know, even more than that. And they're, they're fixing to have an open house there. I don't know the date on it off the top of my head. And, and you know, the, the, uh, that, that facility, the place itself is rented. Uh, the, village, the Bridge Club does have its own organization and its own treasurer and everything else. And they've got a long-term lease with the POA for that. <coughs> that section of the building because it's kind of two rooms because there's a divider running through there and the, the lease was a long-term lease and it came up last year and it got renegotiated and as part of the renegotiation um, the POA is, has purchased um, new carpeting and new tables and chairs for them because their tables and chairs <coughs> were previously paid for by the Village Card Club and the um, tables now are going to be, um, and the chairs will be things that can be moved out because the POA might want to use that room for something. And that's part of the lease that they can use it for like four weekends a year. And, you know, it's a give and take and that kind of thing. And, but they're going to be an open house there so that people can know about all the different card games that are there. And most of those card games are in the evenings as far as the pinochle and the um, cribbage and, and that sort of thing, but it's a, that was created by the people themselves <coughs> is my point of talking about it versus waiting for the government to do it for you, which we're the government. 
Part part of like the dog park. The dog park. <coughs> the, dog park. Example, the people did the dog park. Dog park. <laughs> people did the dog park. Yes, they took the initiative. Uh, the people yeah. people took the initiative. The money. Yeah. yeah, people took yeah. the initiative for the pickleball courts. Right. And right. even though the pickleball courts themselves were built by the POA, everything that's down there was done by the pickleball club. Everything that's there, mm -hmm. the benches, mm -hmm. everything. So. Jerry. And what are your friends' names again, please? And just, this is Kay and, and Jane. Jane. Jane Wilson. Jane Wilson. Is this your first time to come to one of these? Yes. Yes. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. Jerry's been. We had Jerry. We had Jerry. I came to the first one, and then I thought it'd be good to let other people have a chance. You know, and I didn't know if they were. The first one was like a sellout crowd, and and then you know, sometimes interest waxes and wins. So my, I like that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, exactly. my question has to do with um, the, the CEO's report every month at the board meeting. has a section in it about um, village homes and lands and discovery packages and how many have resulted in converting to a property owner and all that. And it's always a year-to-date number. And to me, it feels like we're patting ourselves on the back over and over for the same numbers. And so I looked back at uh, January this year, it was in there, not February, March it was, April it was, not May, not June, but July it was. And I, I kind of, you know, was able to sort of reconstruct, but it would be nice to hear, instead of only the year to date number, the difference from the previous month. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, like I said, it feels to me like, you know, and we know, did this, and right. next month, and we did that. Remember? Don't forget we did that. And we're well, patting ourselves on the back over and over for the same thing. Yeah. Uh, the, no doubt the reason that it's reported that way is that there's an overall goal for the year uh -huh. to have a certain number of, of discovery packages. Uh -huh. So month to month, if there's a zero, then that, that still doesn't mean that we're not going to make that target for the year. Right? So. Uh, I don't know. We, we can mention it to uh, the CEO. It yeah. 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 would be listed both ways. Yeah. 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 I mean, we why not just any more forward? Um, and and that seems to be more realistic or more down to earth. Yeah. There you go. Okay. More down to earth. Okay. And you know, it's something that the board has to request of the CEO. So I'll say to Jerry one that. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> 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 is that your question, Jerry, or did it, that was my question? Okay. 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 I'm probably going to open Pandora's box. Oh, That's good. Right. <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> and, and it's about security, the gate security. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I would like to know do the gate workers work at the direction of the chief of police or the police department or do they work at the direction of the POA? The who police tells department. them the police who department. to let in this village? It's all under the police department. There is a there is policy to that too if you want to mm -hmm. look it up as to okay. people might be able to they buy a ticket for um, damn Yankees is coming up right? They buy a ticket online for damn Yankees and if they present that ticket at the gate they will allow them to come in. Okay. There's other reasons that they mm -hmm. allow people to come in, like but they should be having a, they should have a pass. And you know, um, I know there's been a lot about that. The chief is doing a white paper presently, and has has really has really looked into this. There's you don't have to have a sticker in your car. You don't. Right. You've got to have your membership card, though, if you're a member. Right. And, and policy-wise, almost any employee can ask you for that membership card at any, any time. You know, I, I don't carry it in my Speedo on the beach, but <laughs> they can ask you at any time. I know, they don't even picture it. <laughs> 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 but I do take mine in my wallet when I go to Balboa Beach and and yeah, her speedo and, and my yeah yeah when I, my, 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 my the string is like really bad. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but the chief of police is looking into all these facts and figures, and we don't have to have a sticker in our car. A lot of times people 
have, have got a sticker for their boat, but they haven't put it on. Okay? Are there are consequences for that. Not putting the sticker on. There's or a, not having a pass on your dashboard when you come into the village. Sometimes they find them on the seat. This is this was part of a, this was in the uh, the last board meeting. Uh, Leslie, uh, the CEO, gave a pretty good report on that. In fact, I'm, I was trying to find it so that I possibly could uh, put some of the facts and figures. But the the percentage of people that were basically unknown that maybe didn't belong here was really quite small in comparison to the total number of people. Um, I know that people have been looking in, in windows of the beach, uh, in the car windows at the beach, to make sure do they have a do they have a day pass or do they have a sticker. That's at Balboa. At, at Balboa, yeah, yeah, um, and that's part of the thing. As far as tailgating into the gates, the Balboa gate is now people-wise because we have cameras at all the gates. <coughs> if, you, if you see somebody, call the police because they can look at the film. And possibly get these people to tailgate. Right. They found that they tailgated because they were a guest of a resident, or they were a resident without a card. Okay. So these people had a right to be here. There's another deal too. And they found out that the Balboa Gate That's what now say. has as many people coming in it, if not more, than the East Gate. Have they done a count on that? Yeah, they did a counter. And they're look, seriously looking at, and this will be part of his recommendation. Yeah, but it was part of, part of a report right, also. Uh, of making and having a full time uh, guard out there, just like the other, the other two kids. A temporary housing right. where you have to, yeah. have to stop. Okay. I've been running into issues at the Danville Gate uh, uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago there was a tank truck on the inside of the gate as I was coming into the gate, in, uh, into the village. At the, at the gate, to wanting to get in was this big, what I would say is a log truck. It had those things that go way up. You know? mm -hmm. And it was, there was some kind of conversation going on between that driver and the driver of the tank truck on the other side of the gate. And then the driver got into the truck and almost backed over me. I honked on my horn, and then he got out and stood on the side of his truck and was motioning something. So I backed up, turned around, got out of that lane. He gets over, backs up, pulls over into the exit lane while the tank truck drives up and um, opens the gate, the exit gate, so he can go into the exit gate. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, um, yeah, but those kinds of things don't take matters into your own hands. Call the police. Call the police when you think that there's something wrong. Well, with I did, but I couldn't until I got home because my 911 wouldn't come work in my in my car. I don't know what that was about. Yeah, it's but that was the first time. Second time, John and I were coming in. GPS does tend to take people to those gates, and they it's tried to. to they they did, did, did that to me when I was new here, and I yeah, I, and I didn't. Well, have we're any. always we're always going to be dealing, and you know, at one time. When I in Lima, when I first moved here, that Danville Gate was not available mm -hmm. to property owners. It didn't. That exist. Danville Gate was a contractor's gate, mm -hmm. just like it, it is. There's another one that's like that. Yeah, or to, that's GPS took us to one night right, right, in the middle right. of the night. Right, when it was dark. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and and that big that big logging well. truck, the guy probably said to his trucking buddy, hey, I'm here to go get lot, you know, they're probably, they're probably clearing a lot somewhere to build a house. He's there to pick up the wood from it or whatever. Uh, chances are he had a, you know. Maybe. maybe but, yeah. Well, I have all, I had a situation yeah. where I yeah. went home. I had a guy that, that was had, had, was pulled off to the side. I was going to come through the Balboa Gate. He was pulled off to the side and he had gotten, I watched him as I was coming down the drive before I got to the gate. I watched him come out and get behind the car that was going to be the next one to <coughs> access to come in. And he tailgated on through. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't have my phone. Mm -hmm. And I got home and I called the police and I said, hey, this just happened. And I saw him come through, and the last I saw him was turning left on DeSoto at the mm -hmm. intersection of Ponce and yeah. DeSoto. And I'm pretty sure that given the fact that I was giving him a time, 
I was given them a driver's license. At least they, maybe they, if they, even if they didn't find him, at least they had that information. Right, right. You know, and that's all we can do. Right. But these people that are taking the, becoming vigilante police officers in the village, yeah. and I mean, that's not a good thing. Somebody's liable to pull it. You know, right. there's concealed carry law in Arkansas, yeah. and somebody's liable to pull out a gun and shoot you. And there's a lot of little old gray haired ladies that have concealed weapons <laughs> in the village. <laughs> And she's one of them. The second time that happened, John and I were coming into the village and there was this car just parked over on the side. And waited. And so as we went through, he pulled right in behind us and the gate couldn't close because he was so close on our tail. Well, that time we situation. called the police right there. We stopped and we just we just sat there and called the police. And, and that's another exactly situation what with people letting people in because they start backing traffic up mm -hmm. and people get nervous and they let them in. It's kind of like feeding the deer. Don't expect your plants to be well, there. It's, and and we've never it's solved like, this problem. <coughs> it's some, been going on forever. Sometimes the gate personnel are busy, you know, talking with someone, verifying their need to come in, right. and other people just go through right. the other lane, and, you know, at the, at the east end, there's only one person. So, you know, at the west gate, there's usually two people working so one can be watching the people coming through the sticker line mm -hmm. while the other person is checking in whoever doesn't have their sticker but at the east gate you know maybe there should be two people well, sometimes there are sometimes there are so okay. yeah so i go in so my question revolves around when she said i go in and out of that gate quite a bit and i see it all the time where he is focused on one car and other people are just going in and they're not even looking at them. So you don't know if they're legitimately supposed to come in or not. Or otherwise, um, sitting on his chair and he doesn't even get up and look. Right. And so I see yeah. this so often He's at the East right. Gate. And, and at the West Gate, I don't see this happening. Mm -hmm. I see it at the East Gate. Yeah. And so I'm really afraid for how many people. So, so I was going to ask, so my question is, can we <laughs> tighten up the security <coughs> at the East Gate? Well, they're because working on it. Oh, they're okay. working on it. Yes. And, and uh, believe no. me, if, if Middleton, Chief Middleton right. can do anything, he will. But he's been trying well, to the, other, the other thing, too, that they're doing that you don't know about, the Public Works Department and the VOA are working with Google to change the settings, to, for, to, for Google to change the settings so you don't go to the, the free, right. you go, it sends you to the right gate. Mm -hmm. I've had that happen with Ken folks. That's good. And at, at some time, two or three in the morning, they're still trying to find where they're supposed to be. So that, that's being corrected, and it would just takes time for Google to do it. And with another, one other thing, instead of dialing 911, dial 922-0011. The phone number is now in my phone. Okay. That's why the second time, every one of us should have In your yeah, cell phone, you never know. Uh, you know there's a routine. 922 Say it again, please. The number. You know, 922-0011. That's not emergency police department. The 501. Yes, the 501. And the other thing is, when you call 911 on your cell phone, you don't get a local deal. I knew that. Sometimes they have to transfer you, and sometimes the call gets dropped. It bounces off of different towers. When can we expect the white paper from the chief? I believe very soon. I believe that he was going to have it out. I'm trying to remember a board meeting. My next board meeting. And I assume he gets his direction from the the guidelines, the POA guidelines. In the he, he works under under uh, the CEO, but the, there are policies. But as far as in enforcement, I don't know what you're asking. Yeah, but the policies are here. That doesn't mean they don't have to be revisited. And it doesn't mean they don't have to be changed. I mean, if he no. recommended we change the policy, if that's what he comes to the board with, then we would, we would certainly do that. Right. For, for instance, you know, Kay and I share our concerns that, you know, somebody might come to the gate and say, oh, I need to go to, you know, right. reach his yeah. back, or I'm going, or I'm to, going to an estate center. <laughs> yeah, or I'm going to church, and then they wind up at the beach or mm -hmm. on the lake or working in somebody's house or yeah 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 um we're, we're, i mean we're still an incredibly safe place to live folks we really are i spoke to we the chief you know, about this issue and he said yes there are people who get in who aren't supposed to be here 
but that's generally not the group who are committing the crime. It's us. Right. It's, 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 the, it's the, the kids that come back home that maybe should have a job somewhere, or they, they shouldn't be on drugs, or they should, you know, it's, it, it's, it, I, we live, my husband and I live next door to the retired chief of the police, Leroy, and he says, he says, all the outlaws are not, not outside the village. Sure. He says, you, you know, it's, it's right here. In fact, there was a report for domestic violence today that, the, that was on next door, and I, I thought that was, that was an interesting thing, but that's right here, folks, that's, but we still have a very low crime rate in the village. Do, the, really do the police have the authority to issue a ticket, a, an actual fine that you have to pay? Yeah. No. So they, all they, they can, can do, do that. No, no, they can do no, that. But no, 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 no. They have now have the authority yeah, to yeah. issue a, issue a ticket they that you have to ticket. pay. Not a traffic ticket. They can, for speeding. They can do that, but we don't pay money. We, but we don't get yeah, the money, the but money, they, but will they, issue, they have tickets. started issuing tickets for speeding. Okay, I'll give the consequences of someone who the consequences. tailgates <coughs> in, and I call the police, give them the description, you know, and the route of the vehicle, maybe even follow the vehicle. What are the consequences other than, Nothing. well, you know, ma'am, you should use East Gate or West Gate and don't tailgate again. Well, there's probably so many things that go into the answer to that question. Like, yeah. do they belong here? Did they forget their card? Are they a guest of someone and forgot their pass and the windshield and were, went to another gate that they didn't even know existed? You know, there's there's all kinds of questions to go with that. So what they do, they might just give a, give a warning <coughs> if it's somebody that actually belongs here. And say don't tailgate in. That's a, that is against our laws. Tailgate. But if it's somebody, someone who doesn't belong here, what are the consequences? Well, mm -hmm. they probably will escort the They'd be escorted out. They'd be escorted out. And that's the end of it. They would yeah. be escorted out. That's a trespassing. And that would no, 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 Well, it's no, like no, any no, other no. police officer in any other municipality. You know, you got the, you got a. a, a you know, if the guy gave them attitude and acted, you know, da 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 da, they might run the plate and see if it's a if it's a legal car. They might they might you know there might be some other suspicion going on in that car. But you know, it, it would depend on that officer is a trained law enforcement officer under the state laws of Arkansas, so they would have the authority to to act under those laws. Okay. But we don't get any money for them. It goes to the county if it's a, if it's a ticket. I would say the Danville Road exit uh, gate this week has been manned. The two, uh, I've been going for treatments in Hot Springs, so I'm going three times a week. And so twice I've been already this week. Both, both times there have been police at the gate. See, that's what they're doing as a yeah. result. They know all this is going on, folks. They really do. So there's They read checkers. next door. <laughs> so they, they, they know what's going on, and they, they know that there's a lot of complaints. So they're, they're really working on it. Yeah, we used to have all kinds of things in the police report about mess houses and drug things, mm -hmm. things that were being uh, done. And we never see anything like that anymore. And you can't tell me there aren't drugs in there. Well, um, we don't have anything to do with the do, police that, reports and the newspapers. Well, and call the police department mm -hmm. and ask to speak to the chief and ask him the question. Yeah, yeah. Now, he's I the man that goes to Village Voice, uh, the police report. Well, but that comes voice. from the police department. Yeah, the the collective too, that's not everything that's going on. I don't think, I mean, I don't know, but I, I don't think the, the I, I think that, you know, if you have something going on at your house, oh, let's just say for my husband and I have a little spat. I'm on the board. And we have a spat. And, You're in trouble. And, and, you know, and I, I'm really mad at him and, you know, I want him, beat to, him, get, up. I want him to get calmed down, you know. She broke his foot just last yeah. week. We were running away. If I had, if I call the police out to my house, don't you think I'm going to ask them to please... See, if you can keep the boys from putting this in the paper, I'd sure appreciate it. Because I really don't, I mean, for me sitting on the board, now maybe I need to let you guys know that my husband and I have a fight and I can call the police on it. But transparency. It's transparency. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway, I'm sure that there are instances where there are things that go on in people's homes where they ask the police not to put it, to try to keep it out of the paper. And that may be going on with the drug situation. I don't know. I'm just guessing. 
Some, and sometimes when things are under investigation, um, also they do not yeah. live in the paper. Yeah, it was so very common in the past, past, but we haven't seen anything in the What um, is the future of the new gate system? If we are just going to continue having all of these issues, is there a possibility, is there talk of going on and putting a new gate system on? At in every Do you know that any kind of system, even what we were talking about before with ISN and getting the RFID right. readers, that still doesn't eliminate no. any of those problems that we're, that we're talking about here. That doesn't eliminate any, not one of those. Hmm. Wouldn't eliminate, I mean, you know, the, the gate may close a little bit quicker on somebody, but that reader reads, instead of you putting your, your card up there and a reader to let you in, Instead, you've got a RFID tag, which they're kind of a thick plastic-like thing, and that's on your probably back glass um, if you had a four-door car, you know, on the on the passenger back there glass, so that it reads it and lets you in, and the gate opens, you know. So that's not going to prevent somebody from tailgating behind you because you're a car with an RFID reader on it versus you're putting your glass out there. So what you're saying, saying them all to be manned gates. So what you're saying is there is there any community that has it worked out that you all know of? They're a lot smaller than we are if they do have it They're worked all smaller out. Than us. And, and usually they have one gate. People have suggested that somebody that doesn't live here or just wants to come in or go to a garage sale, take their driver's license at the gate, give it back to them when they leave. That's against the law. We can't do that. Okay. Okay. No, Other than that, understand. well, it's not. Because or we could ask for 120. We, we, could ask, we could ask for their firstborn. <laughs> we should be able to at least get their driver's license information, scan it or something. Yeah, that yeah. should not be illegal. Right. That should right. be legal. Yeah. We That's also, what they do we also will get a, a whole lot of trouble yeah. with the county and the state if we block seven or if we block five. So if cars are backed up all the way to seven, yeah, we're, we're in trouble. Scared. Well, maybe I can make uh, an understanding. When I, I'm in Dallas and all of a sudden I get on another part of the freeway or something and all of a sudden I'm tagged automatically. Right. And all of a sudden I get a bill. Right. Mm -hmm. So couldn't we... Do you know how stop? expensive those systems are? No. <laughs> major, major, major dollars. Yeah, but for Florida Turnpike or you know, Florida Fullways that way, you yeah, take your picture, and then you get a bill three months later in California. Yeah. And you go, what is that? Because then that is money. And they, they've and got, they got hundreds, hundreds of thousands of cars yeah. that going yeah. through there. Has so anybody else got any questions okay. that the, are different? I wanted to ask, and you may have talked about this at another time, but um, so I wanted to ask about Balboa Golf Course mm -hmm. and when we might be working on Balboa Golf Course. And then the other thing I wanted to mention as it relates to Balboa Golf Course is I think that there's irrigation issues over there, drainage, drainage issues. I think it's a beautiful course. There's drainage issues and there's cart path issues. Um, I'm not necessarily on board with the fact that we have to change the whole course or take out sand traps or, you know, but anyways, so I was wondering when we might be planning to do that because I know we've been talking about it for quite a few years. I, I think that we are going to be presented with some options possibly in September, well, I, August or September. We, we have direct, I think it's so, fair to say that we have directed the staff <coughs> to put that into the 2020 budget. It's been kicked down the road long enough. Right. We're, we're ready, we're, it's we're, be we're ready okay. to deal with it. Okay, but, but the details are not, not ironed out. The down. details okay. are not ironed out. Yeah, but that will be at a board meeting and then we'll vote to implement that. And and when we when we do that, we are planning to have a community forum, afternoon and evening session, for people to come mm -hmm. and see what it is that we're budgeting to do. And um, we are going to um, be as transparent as we could possibly be on this situation, but it's time to deal with it. And so, you know, we've got to figure out how to get the money. And Just it. one second, there's a lovely lady in the back row. Back to Kay's question. She said, Who's in charge of gate security? And you all said Ricky Nettleton, right? 
the chief of police. Now, he is the one that decides who can come in here. He's not told who can come into our gates. There's policy. We've set the policy. But the, the policy is there. Um, now, Where is the policy? Where can I read it? You can, it's online at explorethevillage.org. Let me see if I can. Um, it's a policy, not a bylaw. So. My book's about ready to take off, you can tell. Um, Looks like you've studied it a lot. Yeah. Not a lot of tabs. So can Never we search under policy of the gate? Safety policy, I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. And as Diana had mentioned, I'm sorry. Um, Debbie, but as Diana had mentioned earlier, he's going to do this white paper to give his recommendations and to give some facts and figures. Um, no, that's not it. Uh -uh. I think it's just. Look at Article 21. Um, Article 21. Health and safety of employees, yeah, yes, property no, owners. Our no, let's see. See if it's possible. That's working conditions. Um, policy. And if policies need to be changed as a result of his recommendations, then they will be traffic control. Well, let me tell you why I, I asked this. Because I was in Walmart like a year ago, and the, the young guy in front of me was saying, well, he was going over to the village because he was going to an event and there was going to be free food and fun. He said to this other young guy, he said, come on, let's go. And the other guy said, well, I can't get in. He said, well, I can get you in. I know how to get in. I'm I sure. Not, I did not look like he belonged in a village. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before, but I, I don't know. But I know when we what first moved here and we went into Hot Springs to buy furniture, they knew I was from the village. I, I don't know if I have it on my forehead. <laughs> they saw the sticker on your car. Well, when I went to Balboa Beach on um, July the 4th, fireworks day, then, uh, that's what I was going to say. There were so many people there, we couldn't even get in. And I look over there, and there's a bus from Hot Springs. Uh, all kinds of people. How about this, folks? We're not going to solve... Obviously, the, the safety thing has been an issue for, it's been an issue probably for 45 out of 50 years. Now, I'm not saying that that makes it right that we don't have the answers today, but I, I think it's fair for us to say that, that everybody is aware of it and we're working on it. And, and, and we're going to, you know, we'll, we can deal with this problem today, but another balloon is going to pop up tomorrow. And then we'll work on that. It's going to be ongoing all the time, working on safety here. It's just we're a gated community, surrounded by, you know, and everybody thinks that we're all rich. <laughs> they do. They do. They do. They do. They do. Well, I thought you would. Yeah, I've got the lowest uh, net worth of anybody that's ever been on the board. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure. Well, help me understand something. This is a this is a question because I. I just, I want clarification. Okay. When I first moved here, we had volunteers manning the gate. Yeah. Yes. It was much better. Yeah, David Troon yeah. Twiggs comes along and. David Troon Twiggs. Is that his name? David Twiggs. Oh, David Twiggs. Troon is Troon Golf. That's okay. That's okay, Rocky. We knew the amount. It's okay. We all understand. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, this gentleman comes along and puts up contracts for the gates. Now, and again, this is I, I'm really trying to understand this. I'm not making a statement. But we all of a sudden started paying money to a contract company, and it appeared to me at the time, and again, I'm an outsider moving here, it appeared the gates were working real good. And then we had these contracts come in, and it seems like things appeared to start changing. Well, they weren't volunteers. First of all, they weren't volunteers. Well, they were what paid. I want to understand. They, they were, were paid employees okay. of the POA. But we had we had volunteers. But the volunteers that we had were 
um, people that assisted with filling out the passes, okay, the date that it's going to expire, and assisted with taking the telephone calls when you would call in to say, hey, I've got, um, you know, my friend is going to be coming in on Wednesday, da 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 da, and they took down that information. But weren't most of the workers villagers? Most of the workers were villagers. Not they were employees. They were employees. They were villagers. So a study was right now, but they don't know the village like villagers did. Well, but that's not hard to A study was done, and the board at the time, and I don't believe we've studied it since. We haven't studied it since I've been on the board anyway, which is a very very short period of time. A study was done. To, to determine whether or not it was more cost effective for, for us to contract that out or to keep these employees in house with the, you know, all, you know, you don't just have hourly employee expenses when you have employees. You, you've got all the employment expenses that go along with that. And was it more beneficial? And the answer to that, and that board decided that yes, it is more beneficial. So we're going to contract that out, which is done by companies all the time, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the, the route that we chose to do. But these problems that we are discussing here tonight, I'm telling you, have been going on since Ought One. Okay. See, I never knew that those were employees before. Yeah. Yes. I was always under mm -hmm. the impression that they were volunteers. And remember, there was she a time. Some were there was some a time when, not too many long years ago, because when I first, I've been here 16 years, and well, I've been a property owner since '97. And when we were coming down here, come from Illinois, we come down five and then have to go up seven and come in the West Gate to get in here, because there was no East Gate. So if there, there was some volunteers and they were assisting and filling out the cards and things like that, yeah, they so maybe were, that helped the the uh, security people be more effective. Like the situation that I'm seeing at the East Gate, where the person he can't do you know four things at once, and so people are just so you know so in that situation, mm -hmm, yeah. maybe the volunteers can make that person more effective, and it doesn't cost any more money. Now you can, you know, call your guest in or put them on. But you online. can do all that yeah. online now. We yeah. couldn't yeah. used to right. not be able to do that but, online. But it, right. it, it did turn out to be less expensive because the company pays the workman's comp. The company mm -hmm. takes care of the health insurance. The company mm -hmm. takes care of any kind of a pension plan that these people might have. If not, it was the village that took care of that. Okay, so that was it was a it was a, a sound financial decision at the time. Mm -hmm. It wasn't to to put these poor ambassadors in the village of volunteers out of a out of a job. Was it was an issue that existed with the volunteers. They <coughs> consider themselves volunteer. So if company is coming, I'm not volunteering that day. I'm gonna be with and my they company. Didn't show up. Yeah. They didn't show, they didn't call. Yeah. So scheduling was a nightmare. <coughs> And that's why employees had to be put in there instead I mean, of It's real hard to fire a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> it's real hard. They, they fire themselves. I don't do computer stuff. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't want to have to. You're right. <coughs> Terry? Uh, yes, uh, just a couple of brief questions here. Uh, number one, um, uh, Nancy and, and Buddy, you probably remember about eight months ago, I handed a deal out of the board on uh, salary grade job descriptions dating back to 2004, mm -hmm. which I thought was great transparency by the village up until 2013 and it discontinued. Mm -hmm. um, I, I understand the court ruling and everything. It looks like we're probably going to have something back out there. I'm not interested if somebody's making 150000 for this. I like the idea of salary grades, job description, and mm -hmm. the range that that goes in. That's exactly that's what you're fixing to get. Yep, well, that's, get that, that makes sense to go back to that. It is more to get up right now, and it takes a little time to do the math for it, is the, uh, the uh, minimum wage. Minimum wage. Mm -hmm. it, it's got, it's protected for the next three years. 
So it goes up so much. All of that has got to be put in that before they can publish that paper. But they are working on it. In fact, we talked about that today. We did. I wish we would have uh, sat down and been able to iron this out before Cooper took us in, but that's another story. So. Well, uh, it, it, it's a done deal now. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, um, we've, we've been working diligently to try to put some sort of a procedure in right. place. We've got a lot of policy work to do as a result of it because we've got to make the policies adhere to the ruling. Okay, so. Just one other point. I've been here since 2000, and uh, the amenities in this village are great. And we have so many. When we have a financial situation like we have, it's, I know it's not great. And we all know we need $110 a month, just like the people who came in as consultants said, that we're gonna have a problem in 10 years. That's the reason I just keep saying on amenities, take care of what we have, maintain them, and don't worry about somebody that comes up in the committee and says, I want something a little new. We got to put an end to that, and the board needs to. I don't know if it's board or Leslie or who has to draw the line and say, enough's enough. This is a great place to come. We're offering so much, and we ought to be satisfied. Well, what happens, and I remember the menu came up, I think it was kayak lunches or something. Oh, yes. That was, was the situation. Um, and it came to the recreation meeting. Um, you can't blame somebody for trying. And that's, that's what that is. It's ultimately up to the board. If that sneaks its way into the budget, will we have the right to approve or disapprove of, of the budget? Mm -hmm. Now, that's probably not something if it's a $50 pile of rocks to make the, or sand or whatever to make the kayak launch. We're probably not going to not approve that, you know? Um, but, but it's up to the board to approve those things. But it starts at the committee level, and, and honestly, you can't, like I said, you can't blame them. If um, somebody came in and wanted, they just moved here, they said, boy, do you have a croquet field? <laughs> and we're going, well, no. <laughs> Actually, that's one thing we don't have. But boy, that'd be a piece of cake. Have you got your own wickets and your own mallets? Sure. Okay, well, we'll, we'll mow a spot for you. And that's really all you need for a croquet Well, maybe field. the board needs to step that's forward right. and so put it in print, in the paper, and say, this is where we're at financially. This is what we have for amenities. And right now, we're freezing things. Yeah. What's wrong with that? It's kind of like freezing wages. I've been through that. Right. If, you don't, if something isn't working, you freeze it. We, we aren't, right at this point, planning any new amenities. I, I mean, we're trying to keep take care of what we've got. Yeah, well, that's good. I've heard of, I've heard of no, in any of our budget discussions preparing for 2020, I've heard of no new amenities. Our, our main focus in 2020 yeah. is the Balboa Golf Course. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that, that's, that's our amenity focus in 2020. And we think of that as deferred maintenance, folks. We don't think of it as something new. It's deferred maintenance. Because nothing, there. absolutely nothing, has been done to that golf course in the 40 years that it's been here. Wow. Where absolutely Will anything nothing. be done to the clubhouse? Uh, that's part of it. That's sure. part of the presentation that we'll get and to make a decision on. Back to the minimum wage. It's already been decided that people who are currently at the minimum wage will get a, a 75 cent increase. We are not going to get an increased benefit. We're going to spend more money paying people, but we're not going to get anything for it, so it's an expense, That's right. but but nothing new coming in. So pretend you are getting ten dollars an hour. I wish. <laughs> this, this guy comes in in January first. Minimum wage is now ten dollars an hour. Well, we, we, I I know what you're going to say, and that's part of the dilemma with our grading is that. I'd like to hear the rest no, of the no, no, no. Yes, 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 we, food. Okay, I'll, I'll let you. <laughs> he comes in, he has no experience doing whatever it is your job was. Well, I never liked him. And now he comes <laughs> in and he gets the same amount of money that you do. Or more. You are now really pissed off. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, this is not fair. He doesn't know how 
I've been really good, and how does he come in equal to or higher than me just because somebody raised and the minimum? Yeah, so now, the ballot box. <laughs> now you say, this is not fair. I want an increase also because this is not fair. Mm -hmm. How do you budget this stuff? Well, see, that's that's part of what's been going on. We, I mean, we've been in existence for 50 years. Well, there were inequalities, possibly, in, in some of the pay levels. People have been here for years and years and years, and they maybe they were whatever. Let's say they were grade five. Well, they they maxed out of that grade long, long time before. So what do you what do you do? Change right? their title. That's that, well, see, that's that's exactly what normally what that's do. that's what happens. Yeah. But. But that's part of part of this adjustment is that there's a like he said there's a little bit of math involved with this because some people actually need to be brought up to even get to that point, mm -hmm. and other people probably won't get an increase. I, but I, I yeah. have to address my philosophy on this because I go into this. I would have been so disappointed. Yeah, you have to say this, and you know, I am a tight account. What can I say? I am what I am. And I do not, I'm a humanitarian too. But you don't get more money just because you do the same job and you've been there for 10 or 15 years. You advance yourself because you can get better, uh, move up the ranks, if you will. But I don't believe, and I don't believe that Leslie, I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but based on my emailing with Leslie, that just because we're having a minimum wage increase the next several years, that all of our jobs are going up, you know, that, that, that's not, I don't think that's going to happen. But here's the other challenge that we have in regards to our wages here. <clears throat> Part of us lies within Garland County, which is going to boom. It's already booming. You talk to any builders going down there and that kind of thing, and I mean, a lot of speculation going on and land investment and people spending, I mean, the prices in downtown for those old buildings that need asbestos removed, and I mean, you know, we're going to be hurting probably to get workers out here. Our police force is already five people down. We don't have that many well, there's a reason. For They're that. down because you know the competition is very, very tight to fill those jobs. So that weighs into the budget too, and that is a big um, hurdle and a big—I don't want to call it a problem, but it, it's an opportunity for our operations people and our management staff as how they're going to deal with that, and they recognize it. But that's not for the board to decide how they're going to deal with it. We, we give them, we want this done, that done. You figure out how you're going to do it and how much it's going to cost us and see if we can go with the program. But y'all do do the budget, right? No, no, a lot. We approve the we budget, approve the budget and, and you will be able to participate. Uh, we have set the date, but not the times. Uh, that last weekend, week of uh, September, uh, that we will be di doing divisional budget presentations or department, I think it's at the division level, isn't it? Departmental. 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 And you can, we'll be able to come to that. And we don't know exactly what time or what, or what, uh, where, mm -hmm. but um, um, you'll be able to hear those presentations. Yeah. And there generally is a question and answer afterwards also. Yeah. There was a Coronado Center last, last year in two half days. <laughs> and we're looking at three half days this year. Right. What so the dates? Yeah, we don't know no, yet. Well, no, no. September the 30th through October the 5th or something. We're, we're hoping but it'll be announced. It's, it will be announced, but tentatively, tentatively it is scheduled for uh, oh, yeah. October the 6th, or September the 6th. Well, we, we tentatively scheduled it actually for October, for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd is what we tentatively scheduled it for. Because we will, as a board, get, that's what Liz said today, um, we will get a first stab at this budget 
at our board meeting in September, which is on September 18th, okay? Then we'll go in and do these departmental, divisional, lower level budget presentations on, in that first week, and then we are have the onus to approve that budget at our October board meeting. If you want to jump on that, start going to committee meetings, because the committees discuss <laughs> things. Um, I, you've gone to recreation, Stacy's especially good. She'll go over four or five times because she really gets her committee's input as to their priorities. Okay. Not that that's the way it's going to end up, but, but at least and there's and, input and from the public works. Board. Jason has already, I mean, he's been working yeah, well, all of them, yeah. ongoing, yeah. but well, the culverts, we've been talking about the culverts in a lot of right. different meetings. Right. And so the plan is, is easy, he's working on his plan for, the. they've identified which culverts are, if you want to prioritize them A, B, and C, and we got to do with the A's right. first. You know, he's, he's prioritizing those and, and how much of that to put into next year's budget. It's up, it'll be out there, it'll be part of that. Yeah. But visit a committee, uh, visit a committee meeting, and you can go online, find out when they are. And you'll see to how how thorough they are and how, how many times they go through this stuff. So you really have a good idea of what they're trying to get in the overall budget. And if you have any interest in getting any kind of involvement in um, um, local and even state being on, uh, knowledgeable about local and state um, government proceedings, we have had an ongoing opening in our Government Affairs Committee for a number of months now. In fact, they had a lot of them that got where they just couldn't even interview. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. now, now, they're, now they're trying to do it. Oh, I thought that they just came out that they still were looking for. They for, have. Yeah, we just approved two of them. So, didn't make the last board meeting. I thought that was still coming out that we still needed another government affairs committee. Yeah. Probably did. Are there any other questions, Kathy? Okay, <laughs> there, there was a bump on DeSoto that they fixed, but there oh. are five or six bumps on Fresno that are horrible. Uh -huh. That's right. And nobody's ever done anything about them. They tried. Those were culvert repairs. Yeah. Yep. They uh -huh. did a terrible job. Right. Um, and that's, that's uh, you know, that's, they're looking at that a little bit better. They've got uh, the correct roller type equipment to, to firm up that gravel. Well, I wish they would <laughs> fix it because the they they tried to fix it, but it isn't fixed. There's still bumps. I know, um, but they don't seem to be going back doing anything about it. Well, they, they have. Travel well, you can tell time. by the patchwork that they do travel right. all the time, though. I mean, the bumps are awful. I know I do travel it all the time. I kind of enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, and they will be fixing those. Uh, but that was culvert repair, and uh, it was kind of the cart before the horse because they had. They had resurfaced that road, uh, put the stripings on it and the reflectors, and then everything with the culverts sunk. So, okay. Did you determine the uh, policy number or whatever for okay, No, I didn't. I didn't because I never can find one when I'm looking like that. I'll, I'll let Jerry know. Or you can go online and do a little light reading. There's I'll, I'll probably seven. go online and look for it. Okay. You know, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, pages. I'll see if we'll stop racing and see who finds it first. <laughs> well, I'm not going to look tonight. How's oh, that? Okay. okay, so you might win. Does the hay open Pandora's box? I'd like to get it further open. Um, I, I have an issue with seven people being able to change our governing uh, uh, Governing document. Document. Thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> governing documents. And um, normally, bylaws are something that are not easily changed. They are things that are there for a very specific reason and have been in <coughs> place for a very long time. Normally, it takes like more than a simple majority of members to change bylaws in most organizations. Our bylaws have been, but that's that's what we do. We're governors. Is right? change the change the bylaws. We cannot we can change the articles of incorporation. We cannot change the declaration without a membership vote. Right. Okay. And had you folks voted in the nineteen ninety three 
nonprofit articles of incorporation. We wouldn't be able to change those without a member vote. But you didn't, so we can change those. We can change the bylaws, we can change the policies. That's what we do. We're, we're given that authority to change those to correct them. Times change, things change. You need to do that. But seven people making well, such me, a radical change. You voted <coughs> us in to be your governing body. I mean, we're, we're due, the legislators. Due to the lawsuit and, and the. Which lawsuit? The, <laughs> yeah, which one? one? Will you CCI. let me finish and I'll yeah, have an I answer it for you. Uh, it, the lawsuit that Mr. Cooper won, okay? And we are doing everything we can to put everything in order per the judge's order. There is going to be an ad hoc committee put together with a couple of board members and then villagers that apply to, to be on that committee to go through these policies and, and, and bylaws to bring them up to date to meet what was the, in the judge's order. So the people will have an opportunity to be involved in that. So you're saying the policy and bylaws now yes. prevent you from showing or coming through with what the judge ordered? Yes, exactly. Yeah. They did. They did? They did. What? In, what uh, in fact, well, I guess the I policy, don't the policy. If, you, if, you yeah. haven't, if you haven't studied and read the judge's order, you don't have an understanding of what is happening in this village. Yes, he won. We've met with Mr. Cooper. All of this is working very well at this point. But in order to do what the judge ordered the POA to do, we've got to burn, go through these policies. Nancy and I spent a half a day, just the two of us, flipping through, finding things that we could get to real quick. And then we decided that it's going to take quite a while to do this. And we're waiting right now for the for the people to apply to be on that ad hoc committee so we can get started rewriting those things. As an example, and this is just a real simple example, but in, in our policies and bylaws, most privileges come to members in good standing. Right. That means they're not 60 days past due. The judge's <coughs> ruling says members. Period. Okay. So... How do we define members, right? Members, we think of, that get privileges are members in good standing. Right. No, it's anybody that owns a piece of property is a member, according to this ruling. We also have associate members. Associate members have many of the same privileges, in fact, privileges as a member. They cannot vote for directors in an election. We also have assignees, which means if someone lives in your house, you can assign them a membership. They have the same privilege as a member without voting privileges for the, the directors. Okay, so that's just an example of one thing, and over and over in our policies, a member means a member in good standing, and it's detailed that way. But her question had to do with changing bylaws, not policies. Well, Wherever I, it needs to be changed. Wherever. Were you asking about the recent bylaw change? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. She's not asking about changes needed to be done to right. comply with the judge's rules. I know she is. I'm about saying that times change. change. Times change, change and things change. Needs change. We changed Article 12. That's the one that everyone got so excited about. To, to then put all of the onus into the charters for the individual committees so that each charter could be individual to the needs of that committee, because they're all different. It makes the document stand a little bit longer. That particular article has been changed 52 times. We're not, we're not unique in, in editing a bylaw or a policy. I'm sorry, but that's our job. How can you say that that is determined, uh, you're, we are members, we are in good standing who would like that information, but now you're saying that we have to go through and change 
the policies, procedures, and whatever no. it takes. No. 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 no, no, the court order, the court order is now officially in effect. The state of Arkansas gets 10 days after the ruling, and that's why business there was day. 10 business days after the ruling. That's just to get our stuff together, okay? Now, I know that you put in a request. I did. Now, you're going to have to put in a re written request. It has to be for proper purpose. That's I did that. Okay, you did that. Our life would have been turned. made a lot easier if the verbiage in the lawsuit and the judge's ruling would have followed this, that it, everything would have addressed us as property owners versus members because then it would have made it much easier to deal with because then you know a property owner is a property owner that's the name that's on the deed is the property owner right right and so you know and that's what the declaration says let me read you the sentence first second sentence in his summary of undisputed facts all books and records of a corporation may be inspected by any member for any proper purpose at any reasonable time. What is proper? That's the problem. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> that is a little bit of a problem. Is the pro <laughs> is the proper purpose that I need to I need to get everybody's email so I can send them an electronic Christmas card? Yeah. Do you not make that determination yourself? Yes, we will. We will. We will. And what do you deem? to be proper purpose. Really, we're trying now to, I mean, that's not easy. The judge couldn't do it. The judge couldn't define it. It's not easy. What we're looking at now is improper purposes. How about reasonable? Proper purpose or improper purpose, Linda? Reasonable? Still gonna get reasonable out. Reasonable be, would be just as any purpose, it's not improper. <laughs> that's what he said. That's what he said. That's what he said. Right. 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 I'm taking the words out of the judge's mouth. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Thank you, Jerry. We, 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 fig we figured oh, this, no. that in the grand scheme of things, I mean, this is, this is Diana talking, okay? In the grand scheme of things, you get judges' rulings and da da da, da and then you got to put them in practice, okay? Right. And we're going to do our bestest, best effort to, to comply with everything that is there, you know. Member goes down, request information, here you go. You know? And if somebody comes in and they want to get something that we think is doesn't pass the smell test, then that's going to come before the whole board. There'll be an appeal process. And there'll be an appeal process. If, Could if you give an out. example of what so have you? We have. don't know what somebody we may come know. up with, that, but we certainly don't want to run the risk of our members being potentially scammed by somebody. There you go. That would be an improper yeah. purpose. Or you came in and told us that one lady well, increases her mailing yeah. list by yeah. thousands. And and well, I mean, you and know, really do you want do you want board candidates next year to be able to come in and request everybody's email? list so that they can solicit them for their vote and right sure. now we can policy number 13 says you can't use the email the mass email for political purposes yeah. but the but ruling says, the board the board 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 says you can board last year the board did yeah, yeah. yeah. The board has the power to do that. Oh. 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 Improper. Oh. Improper. Yeah, really improper. <laughs> well, we didn't think of that, and I've said this before, we didn't think of the declaration changes as, as political. Oh my oh. God! How could you oh. think that? Because I'm very narrow-minded. I guess, I guess so. so. Yeah. Oh, you're making a joke. Yeah. No, we honestly did not think when when that was proposed. For one thing, the declaration makes us send it out in in print. Those had to be sent out according to the declaration. That was a question with this ruling. Do we have to, in writing, notify every member? And that that, as you know, it runs about eighteen thousand dollars to send a letter to every member of the property owners association. Because 14,500 of them don't live here in the village. Do they have email? No. The 14,500? You have to sign up for it, but no. Sign no, up no. For not we email. don't really have very many emails. There's, There's only 4,000 and something of non-residents that they have. Right. So, has the board, 
Are you determining that you have to meet to decide who gets information no, now? No, no. You had a question. No. I, I'm kind of confused. I even forget my question at this point. I'm sorry. That's okay. Don't I'm not sure it will come back. Oh, I know. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry. You guys are talking about the emails and who gets the emails and who doesn't get the emails, and I think all of us can really appreciate that. I think the biggest, the bigger issue was what are people making and why is it such a secret? Mm -hmm. I think that is what the issue is. So if you want to keep all our emails from us being scammed, then, then that's what you should do. Yeah. I believe, but the I believe judge somebody's has, already examined the CEOs. But I mean, that, that's all going to come out, right? And I don't have to go no, and you say... You have to go. No, one no. person. But I mean, you don't think that one person is going to go and then it's going to be posted? They really shouldn't. Of course they shouldn't, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be a Is that a proper secret. purpose? If they send it all over the World Wide Web, purpose. way out of the village? Oh, I, listen, beyond the I'm world. not... I'm <laughs> going and giving you guys any of my time for this information. Right. But no, we're not going to put it in the paper. If, if you want this information, this is the process you're going to have to go through. If, but is that what the judge, I'm just curious, and the judge said you need to, to yes. put this information and, out, and, isn't and, that what okay. he said? If, if you want to come in and, no. and copy every copy financial you. record yeah. we've got, you have to bring your own copier, your own scanner. I read all your that, own yeah. Paper. That's what the judge said in that sure. ruling. Like, no problem. Okay. But you could just take your camera too and take a picture. Sure. Yeah. Sure. You could. You but can do that. Leslie has already had three or four appointments where people have come in. Her her contract is, is on her little conference room table. Oh, so anybody can go. You have to make an appointment. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Proper purpose. Yeah. Proper purpose. Yeah. And fill out, out an ad. Fill out, fill out one. Out one. And the, the form waiting. is on the website. You can and you can print the form, form off and fill it out and take it in. <laughs> and then you, decide, you guys decide. Yeah. The board decides. No, we're not really going to try and make it difficult for you. I'm on the other way. Huh? I'm on the other way. It depends on what you want. It depends on what you want. I mean, honestly, uh, uh, John Cooper was given 65 bankers' boxes of financials. According to our policy, it was to inspect those. Well, now, I totally agree, and the judge even said it. Boy, it's really hard to inspect 65 boxes of paper in a conference room right. and not be able to write anything down or take any pictures or copy anything. Okay. Um, so, thank you, Monica. You're welcome. Um, so, uh, if you want 65 bankers' boxes of financials, it might take us a little while to pull it together. Okay, not her CEO contract. You're going to have to be specific on what you want to see. Yeah, you have to indicate what you want. Terry? I've never gone down and uh, signed in to look at anything like the true contract or anything. I uh, could have. But what I want to know is if you go down there and let's say you look at something, do I have to sign that I will not even talk to my neighbor about it? Um, that was a question that we'd asked the attorney if, if uh, a non-disclosure agreement, yeah. what, what used to be signed to look at a contract. Uh, that is, is an interesting thing. It depends on the contract. If, if the, the person that we have a contract with has, has a confidentiality agreement, then it gets a little bit grayer. Okay. But other contracts, yeah. But if it's going to harm the village, see, that's another thing, and you all read that in the email. How harming the village, and that's that's what you have to determine also. How does it harm the village? How does what How harm does the village? anything harm the village? How does anything harm the village? Yes, I mean, if you have uh, information and you give it out financially, okay, we all know it, there's no secret, and then everybody is settled down and they it, it doesn't matter anymore. What Diana okay. brought up a good example earlier when she was we were talking about pocket neighborhoods. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say we want to acquire two more lots to have an appropriate number of lots for a develop a builder who wants to come in and put this pocket neighborhood there. And and it's public knowledge where he's gonna do this and where those two lots are. Kathy all of a sudden owns one of those lots and she says, Woohoo, I just made a million dollars. Yeah. Okay. That harms the village. With that type of thing. But I think what Linda's referring to here is employment information. She's not referring to 
business plans. Well, that no, isn't what I'm we were not. talking about, though. We were, no, I'm not. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, I'm only contract. referring to financials, which I have always, <laughs> always considered is important for like a, a finance committee to know what is going on, who is being paid, what is expended expenses, and how. To, it's just a part of the big picture well, that I think that Mr. Cooper was looking for. Finance, it's just the finance the CEO contract. I don't think you could answer that that way, Nancy. No, I'm well, sorry. That's, yeah. that's what it, that's what it no. sounds. He's asking for books and records and, and names and addresses, and there's more to it there than just the CEO contract. Those I'm are sorry. the two specifics that he was in. I understand that, but he asked for for the books, the records, the names, the addresses, the email addresses, the phone numbers. There was more than just the CEO contract right. there. And but I lost my train of thought. Uh, finance records. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say to you, Correct. Linda, is that your financials, all of your <coughs> financial reporting, is things that have already taken place. It's 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 history. Correct. It's reporting of history. So that's not revealing plans. There's a difference between we don't want to reveal plans because that brings harm to us. Future plans. Potential. Future plans, future potentials, because that, that could harm us. That could harm every one of us in here. It could it could devalue our property. It could, uh, if we were a potential buyer, it could cause us to, to cut people out of moving here because of an escalation in properties, you know, speculation, that kind of thing. So you, you have to be very careful with what you reveal for future plans. But reviewing our financial documentation is a review of what happened. Where did we spend our money? So that's not a problem releasing that. It's never been a problem releasing that. You can go back a, 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 a very long period of time and find those on our website, okay? I mean, they're there. Now, if somebody doesn't do things on the web, they can come down to the POA. Tom, I'll give you an example. I, I don't know if I should say a name, but somebody came in and wanted to know about golf bees more than a decade ago. Now, I guess they're going to put together some kind of study, and if it's going to be of help to us, great, because we certainly don't have time to do all of these things that people have ideas for, you know, and it, it might help us. But he came down, and they found the information, and he took a picture of it. So he has it for whatever he's going to do with it. You know, I, 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 I really appreciated when you were at the meeting and you had said, let's do an accrual basis year from year and decide how, where are we going financially? Because in, in the consideration of things, I had a, con a conversation with one of my sisters who owns two corporations, and she had said, no one can understand the financial stability or where we are in the community unless you have possibly a finance committee who could lay it all out and say, hey, everything's fine. That's all of our consideration. That's all we want to know, that things are taken care of. We don't have to worry anymore. But when we are having expenses, and huge ones, million, half, two million, to the, or you know, getting up to 1.5, or spending 500,000, or whatever it is, we don't know what's going on. It's the confusion and not understanding. And that's why I had always thought a finance committee could maybe make that simpler so that we could understand that everything could go away. We don't have to worry anymore. Well, that's, that's not the records issue, but we're working on that too, Chair. Is our POA office mm -hmm. not computerized? Is what? No, our POA. computerized. Right. Okay. So um, I'm assuming, and maybe I'm assuming wrong, that the recent records, maybe not the ones in the beginning, they may not have been ever. No, we didn't digitize Right, them. right. I mean, there's a way to do it, but it's time consuming. It's a lot of work. But the records now, why can't they be made available electronically? Now, I know the judge didn't put that in his ruling because he couldn't, but he said it would be nice if the POA did that. Why is the POA not making them available electronically? Well, what are you talking about, Cheryl? They can email about? us. Um, 
an attachment. They're all in. They're all PDFs. Very easy. Okay. To do. So, so what kind of exposure? To meet a, a member. I mean, I'm not asking for anything. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, if okay. I was, if I wanted a. Okay. Uh, we'll discuss that today. Some, we'll discuss something it, and it's the today. decimation of it. What do you mean? Well, what We're am I doing up. with that We're when I up. get it on my computer? You know, how much am well, I if, disseminating? If I go in there with a copier, I can put it on my computer anyway. You could. Right. Very easily. If I go in there with a copier, Phone. I go home and put it on my computer. Or broadcast it. That's fine. But we, we did discuss that today, and that's something that we really were thinking you would not do. Mm -hmm. You would not transmit electronically. That seems to make um, to be an intent to make it more difficult for people. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying more difficult for me because I'm not asking for anything. But if I understand what you're saying is, it's, um, it, it seemed to me when I read the judge's ruling that it would just be get posted at the POA building and if you wanted to walk in and see it on the wall and walk out, you were done. <laughs> that, that, that is how I thought it would be handled. And, and so I also was surprised that there was a little bit more hoop jumping to be done Right. in order for people to get the information they've been asking for for a long time. We've got a $35 million plus budget and we've been in existence for 50 years. I don't care about 50 what? years. I just want to know. No, what? it's just like we just can't post everything on the wall is what I'm saying. And everybody wants something different. Like she said, this gentleman wanted the fees for golf. He wanted to compare the fees that golf had gone up over the years or whatever he wanted to do. Somebody else wants something else. Yeah, I don't mean for, you know, all the, but there's been a lightning rod, you've got to admit, there's been a lightning rod, and that is Leslie's contract. Mm -hmm. But you can do it. It's yes. right there on her order. I, I know, but instead of making people jump through hoops to do it, why not just post it in the POA building, and if people want to go see it, go see it. All you got to do is call and make an appointment make and see it. Hey, so, I'd be okay. so Drive down there. there. I'm yeah. waiting. I've already been there. So Well, I, that isn't exactly what you want. Well, I, I want more than uh, one. You want more than that. So they're they're looking at, at your request, and I'm you know I'm not going to. Okay, so there's people wanting additional. I right. certainly I get it. Right. Certainly, okay. but you can you can call, make an appointment. That contract and and her salary is available. If she's actually using her conference room off of her office, so that you can review it, take a picture of it, do whatever you need to do with it. Um, I just like to research for myself and not listen to the rumor mill. Well, and that's, that's that is why. That's, that's exactly. perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. If, if we would have appealed this case, it would have been a partial appeal, and it would have been appeal because of the members' names, addresses, and emails. It would not have been because of Leslie's uh, salary package. But I don't understand why you all have to go through. Why can't we just come look at it and go through it ourselves? What do you mean, go through it yourself? Go look through it. We can't. Uh, you can't. You can't. Can. 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 But you all are going through No, it's in her conference room. It's, it's, it's in her conference room. You can't it. take it out of the building. You know they haven't okay, that. you can take a picture of it. But I have to do it. Paper and be a to make an appointment. You have to what? Fill out a paper and be approved. Because you need a proper purpose. I'm just a gentle lady here who wants the best for the best. The judge was the problem. That was what the judge was ruling. Right. That was the judge's ruling. So it's up to us. It's up to us to determine. Here's a copy of the form you have to fill out. It's not a big deal. And it's on the website. You can print it off. You can have this one. No, I got no. No, you got And you just take it down and you can turn it in. And they all and and, and well, this. why are you all going through then? No, 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 no. Maybe no, no, no. maybe somebody wants wants fifty years worth of financial records that they can't find on on the explorethevillage .com because that's part of the ruling too. Is it or part of part of our process? Is if if you if this is readily available already, you can make copies of it off of explorethevillage .com, right? If it's readily available that way. But there's any number of things that people want. I, I think somebody wanted to come in and see the line item of the budget, right? Yeah, they which came is what, what twenty five hundred. They came in and they months. started looking at it, and after about an hour or so, they okay, thanks, and boy, you got a lot of stuff here. See ya. Yeah. 
I, I think she might be was well, asking well, well. is, are you going to do a background check? On no. My, oh, no, no, no. Let me read. This is very simple. It says, one, by submitting this request, I acknowledge the following. I'm a member of HSBOA, as defined in Article 3, Section 1 of the Association's Declaration. I have determined that the information requested is not readily available on the associate's member website. I am seeking access to these records for my own knowledge of association affairs. I will not make these records available to those who are not members of the HSBPOA. I will not use the information to harm the association or others. Then it says, request information, the date, your name, your signature, your property address, your property member number, and then it says information requested. What is it you're asking for? The purpose of your request. What are you asking that information for? And then preferred dates of inspection. And then you'll then call you, make an appointment, and you have what you're doing. That's, so but, is but can you imagine if we had 400 people show up there tomorrow and stand in the front door and want want this? I mean, the, the purpose the is can't handle it. you want to know. It's no, you want to know. Use. The purpose is how are, are our assessment dollars spent. That's all it is. So yes. down to that. How, how, how do you expect to you know police that? I mean, well, if I can walk into my my smartphone, take a picture of this. And it can be on the net before I get out the door. Well, obviously. So how do you really? How do you really? How do you really contain you're right. that? You're very right. Because I, you know, I think this. What you call it? Something special purpose. What's the term you used? Proper. Pro proper purpose. All right. That's all fine That's and dandy, but word. when it comes down to the real world, you know, that doesn't mean a hill of beans to anybody because it's going to leak out anyway. Right. Policing it would only come if there is harm to the association or repercussions down the road, or we happen to see it somewhere. But would, is somebody going to get arrested, or are we as the village going to get fined, or, or you know, we're, we're going to we're going to be liable for something because it leaked out? I mean, as a as a POA group, have, we would have if you say course. it's going to be used for one thing and you do something else with yeah. it, yeah, and we find out, or it just is discovered, we would have legal recourse. It's eight thirty. It's eight thirty. <laughs> the bar is still. Open.